for one of his strikers. Corner short to Tayo. And delivered by Martin. Real chance. Andre Gray, easy as you like, to give Luton the goal that gives them the lead. Gray's 14th of the season. Newport all over the show with their marking. And the home team are in front. I'll tell you what, Justin Edinburgh will be asking questions of his, de his defence there. Who on earth is picking up Andre Gray at the back post? And the ball just got delivered in. That's a decent ball. It's just rolled back to Martin. He's put a decent ball into the back post, but he's in acres. He's got five or six yards with no Newport player around him. And that's a comfortable finish. It's on the volley. He's got to watch it. I bet he just couldn't believe his luck on how much time and space he got to pick his spot. Pitch that actually put it in, but go back to the goal there. Just great delivery to the back post, but then you look, there's three Newport County defenders. Remember, if Wrexham don't go up this season, they've got a the small matter of Chester back in the league as well. The sure goes for goal! And hits the crossbar. Lenny Pidgeley scrambling there. Great effort. It's always dipping. Unfortunately for John Sean for Luton, he just hit. Huge intake of breath from Snodds to my right when I announced there was another goal there. No offence to Forrest Green, but I think he's a little disappointed. That was the only answer as Roe Turner took charge there. This is Jolly. This is a chance, and that's an equaliser. Christian Jolly seizing on the indecision in the Luton back line. And it's Luton 1, Newport 1. That's a poor goal to concede. Steve McNulty asking questions about his keeper. His keeper not happy with his defence. And that is a poor goal, but persistent by Jolly here. A drill. And Roe Turner caught two minds. He's quite fortunate there, Jolly. But then when he's got into that position, he's just driven it. The goal for Stockport. And remember, just one more goal for Hereford would mean Kidderminster back on top of the pile. And it's that close. Here's Wall for Luton. Hughes to poor clearance. It's Gray! What an emphatic finish! That is what you call a mistake being punished. Andre Gray with his second of the night to restore Luton's lead. I tell you what, Steve, no keeper. No keeper could have saved that from Andre Gray. What a strike. So much pace, so much venom. But it was Wall again, his willingness to run, to work hard. This is a poor clearance. Poor clearance again. By a Newport defender, but take nothing away from this finish. As we see the more. But once he's bounced there, oh, that's in the back of the net before Lenny Pisley get anything on it whatsoever it's an emphatic finish just see it again so much pace you don't save them 15 goals for the season he keeps a form like this then it could be very very difficult to stop football league clubs prizing him away he's won he might have a go. Pitchley was equal to it. Corner to Luton. I liked him when he came. Inviting one, but it's too close to Brill. He wanted to punch on that occasion. Put it back in by Wilmot. Helped in by Minshall. Jolly! 2 2. Well, he has his second, just like Andre Gray did at the other end. Justin Edinburgh punches the air because Newport are back on terms for the second time tonight. I think what the uh, fans are questioning, what his players are questioning, could Dean Brill have caught that? I think he could. I think there's a ball put in there, Sandell. There's nobody near him. He's got to catch that for me. Dean Brill's a big lad. He's six foot four. Ball for marking as well. Yeah, but Steve, he's, he can't really say it's awful marking. Eight. As the balls get played back in, I just think the keeper's got to take all the pressure. Uh, Premier. So Luton take this free kick, and it's an equaliser for Stockport. As the shot came in from Robinson. Onside, a little bit too much pace. 
full-time whistle. It's honours even and it's...